space for each uh, person in the data set. So you click on save as variables and you uh, for a principal components analysis you do a regression method there's actually another Bartlett method and Anderson Rubin they have their advantages and and their disadvantages in the common factor analysis mode whereas in PCA you only have regression as an option you can technically choose Bartlett and Anderson Rubin but uh, I, I'm pretty sure it is actually only going to produce regression um, co regression based uh, fact component scores alright so then I'm going to put my variables in there and I'm going to click OK. So what it's done is a component analysis and we can see the correlation matrix right here. Wrist size and body height correlate 0.66 uh, together and then weight correlate 0.52 with body height and then finally wrist and weight correlate 0.63. So this is a great positive manifold to create a one single component um, for uh, body size and here we have the component loadings. And these are 0 0.85, 0 0.896, 0 0.83. So all very strong components. Uh, so the um, component, uh, so the c component analysis is going to use these weightings to whether it's whether it uses exactly these weightings or it uses the cov the unstandardized ones. I'm not sure if it creates standardized and then uses those standardized scores to multiply based on these um, coefficients. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm going to rename this body size component I'm gonna call it a factor just for simplicity but it really is a component component scores so now I've reduced these three variables into a single component score that is uh, very coherent because it's got three very three variables that are strongly correlated with each other positively and arguably this score is a better indicator of general body size than either of these three individually. Uh, so now that I've got my body size factor, uh, I am prepared to do a covariance analysis. Now technically I could have thrown in all three of these as covariates into the ANCOVA, but I would have eaten up some degrees of freedom by doing so. And I would argue that it's more theoretically and from a measurement perspective, it's better to create a component that um, is based on the, the shared variance of these three variables, which is representing body size. And also, you don't have to do the linear regression, uh, the homogeneity of regression assumption for all three variables. I'm only using one in this case. In fact, that leads me to the first step of doing an analysis of covariance, which is to test the assumption of homogeneity of covariance. And what I'm getting at here is that the covariate has to have the same correlation with cranial capacity for both males and females. All right, because the analysis of covariance is going to use that information to help estimate adjusted means. So if the correlation between body size and cranial capacity is wildly different for males than it is for females, then the analysis won't be accurate because it uses a pooled estimate for that. Now let me show you in a very quick way what I mean. I'm going to split the file uh, between males and females. I'm not going to tell you exactly what I'm doing here. I'm doing it quickly. I just want to split the output for males and females for regression. So I'm going to analyze, I'm going to regress. Um, let me throw that out. I was doing some other analyses. So I want to regress the body, I want to use body size to predict cranial capacity, but I'm splitting my file for males and females. Okay. So for males, I've got a beta. Now this is for females, sorry. So females, sex equal female. I've got a regression of a standardized beta weight of 0.288 and an unstandardized beta weight of 76.95. For males, I've got an unstandardized beta weight of 27 and a standardized beta weight of 0.12. So I think more importantly here, we're going to focus on the unstandardized beta weights. That's pretty different. 27 versus Uh, I just flew by 76.9. That's pretty different, but the sample size isn't very large. So my hunch is that it's going to struggle to find that as difference in a statistically significant way. Now, to do that in ANCOVA, uh, you go into analyze. What I'm testing here is, is there a statistically significant difference between the regression coefficients between males and females when you regress uh, cranial capacity onto body size? But it's going to do it in a slightly different way. It's going to do it by estimating a 
interaction. So I'm just going to go through the 